in. My name is Katherine Morton. I am the or I am the communications director for ABSCUF, the Association of Pennsylvania State College and University Faculties. We are the union that represents the faculty and the coaches at state system universities. And thank you so much to everyone for coming tonight. We really appreciate that you came and we hope that we will see you at the state system sessions next week as well. So this is the first of four events that ABSCIF is holding. Again, as we said in our message that we sent out to you and that it was in our material that marketed this event, we're not affiliated with the state systems events and we also do not take the place of their hearings, but we wanted to offer some more opportunities for people to have their comments heard in their entirety. We believe that there should be as much time as possible allotted to hearing from the human beings who are going to be affected by these consolidation plans. So we're in the public comment period. We're emphasizing the word public. We want you to have folks witnessing your comments so that they're truly public, not just comments made by members of the public. So what we'll be doing here tonight is we are recording, as you can see, you probably have an alert in your window as I highlighted in red, we're recording. So keep that in mind as you speak and as you comment in the chat and we will be sharing this recording with the state system. We'll be posting it to their page that they have designated for public comments. We'll also be sharing this with legislators and reporters. So again, keep in mind, we are recording this. Um, how this is going to run, I have about five or six minutes to tell you just some opening comments and how, how everything's going to, to work. And then we're going to have a brief introduction from an ABSCIF officer who's here, and then we're going to roll right into your comments. So I'm glad that you are all here. I hope that you've got a, your thoughts organized and, and that you're ready to go. We are not, a, this is not a quick Q&A session per se, but if you do have some questions, we will do our best to answer them quickly for you. And if not, then you, please keep note of the questions that you have and you can take those with you to the state system sessions next week. If you're a reporter on this call, thank you for coming. We're very glad to have you. If you have questions, please wait till the very, very end to make sure that everyone's had a time to make their comments or even better, please contact me afterward. You have my email, many of you have my phone number. And as you know, I always try to make myself as available as possible to reporters, but this is not a press conference. So thank you for being here. I'm happy to take your questions at the end or afterward. We want to make sure that everyone has a chance to talk today. I see there are 36 participants. So if everyone takes two minutes to talk, that's more than an hour. So although we are not timing comments and we will not cut you off after a certain time, we do want to make sure that everyone's respectful of everyone else's time and opportunity to speak. So please keep that in mind and be as concise as you can, but you will have an opportunity to, to finish your thoughts. If we go way over time, which I'm hoping we don't do, we've got some other events coming Coming up, you can go to abscup.org slash comments and come to another event, but we will do our very best to get through everyone today. And you will receive an email from me afterward with a link to, I keep referencing the state systems events next week. So you'll get a link from me after the event to go and uh, attend those as well. We strongly encourage you to do so. So for today, I also strongly recommend that you tell your story. So we there's talking points that we've, we've got on our website. We, there's the plans that you can reference. There's all kinds of information and data out there, which is great as a reporter uh, in my history. I am all about attributing and having facts, but your story is one that only you can tell. So I encourage everyone to tell your story and what this means to you specifically. We want you to give your thoughts and your opinions. And if you want to, you can also give suggestions. So I looked up the definition of a comment in the dictionary before I arrived and the definition is a verbal or written remark expressing an opinion or reaction. The dictionary's example sentence was, you asked for comments on the new proposal. That's what the dictionary uses as an example. So the state system has said that they want to hear actionable comments, but we feel that all comments, whether they have action or not, are important and deserve to be heard. So share what you want to share, whether it's an action or not. This is a public comment period, not a public suggestion period or public plan period. We want to hear your comments, whatever the form that may take. Uh, so feel free to make suggestions if you want, but you can also just come on and say, I'm for or against, whatever you would like to say. It, it, your comment, those are fine. We also, again, encourage you to follow up by submitting written comments to the state systems website. I'll include that in my follow-up email and also to attend the state systems events next week, as I've said many times. Some final protocols to keep in mind, as I mentioned, please put your first and last name, make sure that those are displayed. If you're from a campus, we'd like to see that too. 
As always, you've been doing a wonderful job so far of everyone staying muted unless you're talking. We would like to use the raise hand feature to get people into the queue. I will be keeping track of who's up to the microphone, so to speak, and I'll announce who's next. If you would prefer to deliver your comments, or we would we would prefer for you to deliver your comments with your video on. If you really, really don't want to, that's not required, but we'd like it if you would. If you're super nervous about speaking, you can also post your comments in the chat because we'll be saving that as well. Um, and if, you're, if your rate feature is not working, please also, you're welcome to send me a message in the chat. We also have our wonderful intern, Melissa from Kutztown University, taking some notes today just on the topics and the general nature of the comments so we can go back and find who talked about which topics. And so they are taking notes about who's saying what. If you don't have your first and last name listed, they may message and say, hey, who are you? We'll only ask once. We don't want to make anyone uncomfortable, but we, re we would really like our record to be as, uh, it's as, con or as full as possible and as accurate as possible. Finally, some manners. As I said, your comments are not timed, but please be as concise as you can so everyone has a chance to speak. We will not kick you off before you've completed your points. But again, there's more than 30 people here, so keep that in mind. Oh, there's 41 now. Please, um, you can repeat a point that someone has said, but if you do that, please again, add your story so it's personal and so that they're a little bit different from one another. Most importantly, this is not a debate that includes the chat. So we'd prefer not to have you responding to other people's comments. We'd prefer you to just state what your comments are and then move along. And most, most important, please no personal attacks. Focus on the plan, not the people, not people associated with the plan, not what other people have said. We want to keep this civil and we want to keep it efficient. So that is all I have to talk about. I'm now going to turn it over to Dr. Chris Callen. He is from Bloomsburg University and is our vice president. Thank you, Catherine. Had all these remarks to say and she did most of them. So I'm gonna repeat a few things that Catherine has said. I'm saying first, good evening and welcome to the first of the ABSCOF public comment sessions on the systems consolidation plan. I am Dr. Christopher Hallen. I'm a chemistry professor at Bloomsburg University and the vice president of ABSCOF. Uh, as Catherine pointed out, our goal this evening is to hear your thoughts, your views, your perspectives, especially your stories, whether they be good or bad, that are related to the consolidation plan that was uh, presented to the Board of Governors. Uh, Catherine will put the link in, in the email. There are a bunch of us here tonight. Uh, everybody's going to want to tell their story. Uh, I want to listen to them. So what I would ask you is to, to have a point and to try to get there concisely. Uh, we are going to share these comments verbatim with the system and with the Board of Governors. And I'm sure they'd find it more enjoyable to uh, hear the punchline and not doze off in the middle before you kind of get there. If you do have questions, again, this is not a question and answer uh, event, but if you do have questions, uh, please bring them up to the Board of Governors. They have a, a website, they have their, their public comments. You have two minutes that you can speak at their public comments. Uh, or we'll just do the best we can to answer them. I'm sure that if you send an email to Catherine, she will pass it on to uh, President Jamie Martin or myself, and we can come up with, uh, with an answer for you. Uh, another thing she pointed out, and I reiterate, please note that we're looking for, not looking for a debate. Uh, we really don't, to make it you know, easier to listen to, we, we're not looking for your comments on someone else's opinions. Everybody's got opinions. Uh, we're expecting diverse opinions, in fact. And we don't want to have this become like a Senate hearing with the filibusters and the likes as, as everyone's trying to debate uh, each other. So in closing, yes, thank you for coming out. And I'm looking forward to what we all have to say. Uh, Catherine. Yes. All right. So we're ready to start documenting comments. So whoever has something to say, I hope many of you do, please raise your hand and I will start my list of speakers. Vivian, go ahead, you're up. And next will be Clover. Okay, hi. Whoops, hi everyone. Um, thank you 
for having this opportunity. I really, really appreciate it. I will try to keep this concise, but I do have a story to share. Um, hi, everybody. I'm Vivian Severn. Um, I am the wife of Dr. Eddie Severn, who is a tenured music professor at Lock Haven and who is up tomorrow is retrenched after 13 years of service at LHU. Um, <clears throat> I decided to speak tonight because I'm tired. Um, I'm tired of a lot of the rhetoric I'm hearing and I'm tired of the denial that the consolidation is not playing a role in the current retrenchments. We know, all know that the uh, retrenchments would not have happened with the original five-year plans, yet the arrival of the pandemic came and it was condensed into two and the retrenchments happened. This of course caused a lot of disruption in every single one of the Pashi schools. Um, I'm really tired of witnessing the chancellor and upper management referring to my husband as being, and I'm quoting, excess teaching capacity, part of a headcount reduction and a faculty member needing to be shed to right-size the university and the PASHI system, I find this incredibly offensive. So I'm sharing my husband's story of being right-sized. And I'm sorry, I'm nervous. I'm very emotional about this, as you can imagine. Um, in October of 2020, an LHU alum created a petition that circulated throughout the LHU community and beyond asking for Dr. Severn's retrenchment letter to be rescinded. 256 alumni, faculty, staff, and community members signed the petition and 64 comments were made. Right now, I'm going to quickly post in the chat a link to that if you're interested in seeing that. <clears throat> Most comments included the importance of music at LHU and what an asset my husband is to the university. Many wrote that they would not have chosen LHU if they, there hadn't been any music, and some even declared that they will no longer donate to the university because of these actions towards my husband. The petition was sent to former LHU President Pignatello, to current interim President Hanna, and to the Pashi Board of Governors, and as expected, there has been no response. My husband has dedicated his entire career to, L career to LHU and he has brought tremendous value to the university and the community and you'd see that in the comments of the petition. And I know and assume that every single retrenched faculty member in the system has brought incredible value to their institutions. Terms um, such as shedding and right-sizing and excess teaching capacity dehumanize these professors that are committed to the high service of educating future generations. And this is intentional. Using dehumanizing terminology creates a wedge and a disconnect with the value of the mentorship and the guidance and leadership that professors give students. I'd like to read two quotes from a conversation that the chancellor had with the LHU faculty in March. He said, the ability to transfer faculty to areas where they have the relevant abilities to create opportunities across the system so that even in universities who don't have any need or interest in participating in retirement incentive, they are participating because they recognize that we have an obligation, I think moral and otherwise, to work together to do everything we can for our most important resource, our employees. Later on in that same conversation, he says, <clears throat> I want to remain optimistic that with our combination of retirement and our ability to find roles in our most precious resource, our faculty, you, my hope is that our administrations working closely with our faculty can get through this in a way which has the most limited impact. I transcribed many, many conversations, many, many hearings. So this, this is verbatim, just for the record. The faculty and the students are real people. They're not just numbers on a spreadsheet. And it's time these teachers are heard and they're respected and valued. And as you heard Greenstein say, for being the most important resource and our most precious resource. So kicking out these most valuable assets is simply unnecessary and it's unconscionable. So lastly, I'm tired of seeing the tremendous destruction and academic suicide that this redesign has already caused even before being passed by the Board of Governors but I'm not too tired to speak up and fight for what I believe is in the best interest of the students, which includes retaining every single retrenched PASHI faculty member. Thank you. Thank you so much, Vivian.
Clover, you're next. And whoever would is interested in speaking after that, please raise your hand so I can get you in the queue. Clover, go ahead. Hi. Um, it's nice to see all of you. Um, and thank you for recognizing me. Um, my story is not a personal one. I just uh, have a couple of comments, things that I have observed and picked up and read between the lines. Um, and that's how I had to learn them because the accountability and the transparency for exactly what consolidation entails has not been very straightforward, as you know. Um, one of the things that concerns me an awful lot is the fact that I, I teach at Cal U. I'm sorry, I couldn't figure out how to update my settings to put that in there. This is my, I just finished my 12th year um, at Cal. And I have to say that the timing of this sucks so much <laughs> because um, most of us are coming off of one of the hardest years we've ever taught. Um, and so after pouring our hearts out for our universities and our students, um, this feels like a triple slap in the face. <laughs> um, anyway, so I've been doing some integration work on committees. And one of the things that really troubles me is that um, the individual programs that are specific to certain university campuses um, seem like they're going to get trimmed off. <laughs> and um, I'm concerned about that because number one, there's faculty that teach in those programs. There are students who those programs attract in some cases, those programs have a um, national accreditation, which is very hard to get. Um, and I'm thinking in particular of the deaf ed program at Edinburgh, I'm concerned about that. Um, but really any program that is special, we have at Cal, we have the professional studies and education program, which is just a, it's a kind of a, a new, open format education program where students could take classes in like business administration if they want to have a childcare facility and not just study to be a teacher, um, but still stay in the field of education. So um, I'm concerned about um, having this sort of uniform approach to curriculum where we're going to lose these unique programs. And I'm worried about the faculty and students attached to those programs. That's one part of it. The other part that I am extremely concerned about is the economic impact um, because we are going to lose students. We're already losing students. We're going to lose faculty. These little towns, I mean, I'm just going to speak about California because as an Erie, it's a little bit of a bigger town. Pittsburgh, again, a little bit of a bigger town, but California is a dot. Has anybody ever been there? It is basically a, an intersection with, with a stoplight and the light, you know, and people are like, go to the light and make a left. That's it. That's it. And so if the university falls, it's going to affect a lot of people in that town. It's going to affect the whole town. It's going to affect the schools in that town as professors lose their jobs and move away and uh, have to sell their house or can't sell their house and the property values fall and the taxes fall and then the schools have less funding. So it just becomes this domino effect and I feel like we're being railroaded um, into this consolidation without any consideration of the repercussions or the wider effects of what it means. Um, for the for the university campuses, for the students, for the faculty, and for the communities. Thank you for listening. Thank you so much. For next, we have Rick, and after that, Eric from Bloomsburg. Rick, go ahead. Okay. Oh, sorry. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Catherine. Um, uh, and let, let me just say, of course, we are sick about uh, the retrenchment of the two faculty from Lock Haven, Eddie Severn and Damaris Lopez. And um, it, it really is unconscionable. Uh, my comments are, are related, of course, to what is best for the students as well and the loss of faculty and the decline and uh, in, the, in the quality of the programs and, and courses that they're going to not have access to. And, and it's associated with um, 
you know, also, well, most of my, my comments are, are, are in reflection of, of students. Um, and the chancellor uh, and, and a local administration have long been touting how students are so excited about uh, prospects of the integration, the increased opportunities it's going to afford them through uh, you know, new programs. Um, of course, they've been reluctant to indicate that many of those new opportunities are gonna be through distance education and online courses, which of course, um, we've had a whole year plus now of, of experiencing, um, you know, that, that, that students are often not very enthused about it. So I just want to actually just share, and I'll try to be brief, um, our, uh, you know, the PASHI system, uh, particularly the Northeast integration uh, folks, uh, did um, uh, con have consultants uh, do a student survey and I just want to share some of the results of, of those uh, that survey um, directly from the students, rather than the made-up composite students that was part of the chancellor's presentation uh, to the board of governors. So this is a reflecting of of 1,207 uh, Mansfield, Lockhaven, and Bloomsburg uh, um, students. Um, and uh, I, I'm just gonna share just a, a few direct, the questions that they responded to um, and, and some indications uh, of their responses. So um, the first one is a rather long question. So please bear with me and I'll try to be quick. I'm not gonna go through all the questions, but the first one is imagine you are a potential incoming student for fall 2022 with the new integrated university, you would have an expanded selection of, of majors to choose from, but may take may have to take some classes via distance learning. How might the new array of offered programs and majors affect your decision to attend the integrated university? Well, 67% um, of Bloomsburg students, 61% of Lock Haven students indicated that that would decrease their interest and likelihood of attendance to an integrated university. Mansfield, 55% of the students indicated it would decrease or would not impact their decision to attend. Um, hardly an indication of excitement about the prospects of an integrated university. Um, the next question was, how likely would you be to pursue a major if you had to take some percentage of required courses in a distance learning format? Um, in this case, 50% uh, of Bloomsburg University students, 65% um, of Lock Haven, uh, students and 35% of, of, of uh, Mansfield students indicated they would be very unlikely or unlikely uh, to take some, per, uh, 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 to pursue a major if you had to take some of uh, those percent, percentage of required courses uh, online. Only 22% of, of uh, Bloomsburg students, 16% of Lock Haven students and 32% of Mansfield students, meaning less than one third of all students polled indicated they would be uh, likely or very likely uh, to pursue a major if those courses, if they were uh, offered, uh, if, they, if a percentage of the required courses were done through distance education. Um, the next question is what percentage of your courses would you be willing to take in a distance learning format uh, of any kind and in this, less than 50% of all students polled uh, were willing to take, uh, you know, all different courses uh, in, a, in a distance education format. Um, and in fact, 75% of Bloomsburg University students, 80% uh, of Lock Haven students, 65% of Mansfield students uh, indicated a strong preference for face-to-face -face classes, uh, indicating that they were only willing to take up to 25% of courses through distance edu education. Um, uh, the, the next question was, if you prefer to take all or most of your courses face-to-face, -face, how likely would you be to prefer, uh, or how likely would you be to transfer to a different campus to complete your degree if your home campus did not offer your required courses in a face-to-face -face format? Um, 
30% of Bloomsburg students, 49% of Lockheed students, and 34% of Mansfield students indicated that they were likely or very, very likely to transfer to a different campus if their home campus did not offer required courses uh, in a face-to-face -face format. Um, these are significant percentages that will have, you know, that potentially would have a, a very a, a long, a strong in, uh, impact on all of these, all of these campuses. Um, the, the, the next sort of group of questions is, asked, is related to students being asked to rate their preferences for distance learning uh, formats. And um, I'm, I'm, I'm just gonna sort of summarize, there's three different questions. So I've, I've taken up my time and more, more of it. But in overall, uh, in general, less than a third of students preferred any of the options of either fully synchronous, asynchronous, partially asynchronous, or fully synchronous, uh, uh, um, uh, you know, uh, modes, modalities of, of teaching, uh, uh, aggregately uh, indicating a strong preference for face-to-face -face, uh, instruction. Uh, and the very last question I'll share with you uh, is the very last question on the survey. Um, and it was uh, asking them to rate, disagree, neutral, or agree. I believe the integration of the three universities will benefit future students. That is example, access to more majors, increase accelerate degree programs. Um, in this question, 69% um, of Bloomsburg uh, students uh, and 88% of Law Caving students either were neutral or disagreed um, that this would benefit future students. Um, 60, uh, uh, the, the percentage for Mansfield was 57%. Um, uh, in terms of actual disagreeing with uh, that these integration of the universities would benefit, benefit future students, 39% of, of uh, Bloomsburg University students uh, and 68% of Lock Haven students uh, uh, you know, indicated a disagreement. So, this is um, this is a recent uh, survey uh, that was that was uh, shared with us, uh, and really belies, really really um, flies in the face of the narrative that coming from the chancellor's office and local administrators that students are somehow excited, you know, about the possibilities and the opportunities that these integrated universities uh, will provide. Um, I'll I'll stop there. Thank you for your indulgence. That was way over two minutes. Thank, well, we're not doing two minutes, but thank you very much for, for uh, consolidating your comments. Sorry, that was a terrible choice of word. Um, thank you for, for sharing that with us. Um, I see that there's a few people who have joined us, so I'm not going to go through my whole five minute presentation that I did at the beginning, but I do just want to remind folks of the, the basic, the most important manners that we talked about at the beginning. Um, as I said, our comments here today are not timed, but please do try to be cognizant of how much time you are taking because we do have more than 40 people here tonight, which is amazing, but we want to make sure that we give everyone a chance to speak. Please, um, if, if you hear a comment that someone else has made about a topic that they've made, it's it's fine to, to discuss a similar topic. Please add your own story. We encourage everyone to add their, to tell their stories that are unique to you. But most importantly, we want to emphasize that this is not a debate. So we're not bouncing off of one another's comments, please just state yours. And also please make sure that when you're speaking that your comments are not personal attacks. Please focus on the plan, not specific people who are affiliated with the plan or um, other people who have spoken today. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Eric Miller from Bloomsburg. Anyone who would like to speak, please raise your hand. I see Kim Johnson, you've raised your hand and Paul, you guys will be up next. So next is Eric, then Kim, then Paul. Eric, uh, go Thank ahead. you, Catherine. Um, I'm in my eighth year at Bloomsburg University. It is the first and only academic position that I've ever held. Um, and I anticipate being a, a lifer here. And so I'm pretty concerned about the, the future of, um, of the university and, and what the consolidation um, entails. I'm tempted to withdraw my hand because Rick said most of what I was gonna say and did it with data. Whereas I was just gonna point out anecdotally that if there's one piece of feedback that we have gotten from students throughout the horrible pandemic year, it's that they hate taking online classes. Um, and the faculty, I think to a person, um, hate teaching online classes. We don't wanna be online universities, we wanna be in the classroom. And I think it's, um, it's gonna to be tough for us to compete with other universities for students 
when those other universities are able to say, you know, we'll teach you in person. Um, we won't put you on Zoom like the, um, like the consolidated university will. Um, and that's going to be a challenge for us. And I think it, it needs to be um, taken into account. Thanks. Thank you, Eric. And it's, it's great that you added your spin to um, the topic of, of what students are, are thinking and their feedback. Next up is Kim Johnson of Westchester. Kim, go ahead. And then after that will be Paul, Dan, and Ramona. Hi, I'm Kim Johnson. I'm also um, at my Westchester University. I'm in my eighth year at Westchester as well. So, um, I know our university is not as affected, but I'm also a graduate of Millersville University. And um, I, my concern is this. My concern is that, that there has been no evidence or no information given about how much money this is, any of this is gonna save any of these universities, how much money it's going to generate. And I think my concern is that once they consolidate universities, and they don't see any money being saved, the universities will no longer be universities. They will be campuses with as a central university. And that will give them the right um, legally to disband those universities so they can close them. Once they become campuses and they're no longer universities, they can close the campus. And that's my concern is that there, that long term, there's a mission that's being not shown to the public, that there's a long term trajectory here that the um, Board of Governors has in, in mind, and that is to close campuses, which they can't legally do now, but to do that by consolidating them, making them campuses, not universities and then being able to close those campuses when they're not being um, making money or th they haven't saved the money that they claim. They don't even have any claims that they're saving money. So that's my concern <clears throat> is that down the line that these universities will be closed campuses. Well, they'll become campuses and be closed. Thank you, Kim. Next is Paul and after that, um, Dan and Ramona. Um, I am a senior secondary education uh, major at Kutztown University, and um, I just kind of want to talk about this from the student side of things. Um, now knowing that Kutztown isn't um, a directly affected school, even though we are looking at a, around um, 150 job losses in the area, um, if this consolidation plan were to go through. Um, but just the fact that the students, um, they, I don't feel like the 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 state system has explained what is actually going to happen um to the students right they haven't been able to make their case that this is something that's good for the students or for anybody really and most of the plan just seems to be wishful thinking um you know and with that wishful thinking come you know a lot of promises that aren't you know backed up by anything and um i also feel like they're doing this during the summer um when the students aren't together with the faculty when they're not able to you know, speak up and speak out as much as they were if this were going on, um, you know, when class was in session, when people are together, when they're communicating. Um, so I feel like the university, um, so sorry, I, I didn't really prepare anything. <laughs> I'm just kind of rambling, I guess. But um, I, I feel like the students um, have had a disservice done to them. I don't feel like students really know what they're getting into. And I feel like it's our job um, altogether to kind of stand up against this and at least you know if not the if not the cancellation of this consolidation plan in its entirety it should at least be delayed to get people um to really understand what's going to happen um you know with the 1500 the 1500 um person job loss across the state just all of this it's bad for the communities it's bad for the students and it's bad for the faculty um and the staff at every institution and I feel like there just needs to be more time for people to understand that there needs to be more communication um, between everybody. That's it. Thank you, though. Thank you, Paul. We're really glad to have some students joining us. We have our fourth session. I believe it's the 15th. It's just for students, but we are super happy to have students here today and at our other sessions. You're all welcome. Um, these are open to everyone. Next is Dan Spiegel from Kutztown. And after that, Ramona.
Dan, you are muted. I'm a computer scientist and I, I, I know better. Anyways, I rushed into the house, but no excuses. Anyways, I, I've been looking, everything I've seen about this plan, um, with the feedback that the state system is looking for, it's all about, well, how can you, how can we make the plan better? And that is the problem. Because I'm a computer scientist, I'm trained in logic. And logic says that any conclusion drawn from a false premise cannot be legitimate. And their conclusion is that their plan can work. Their plan can't work. And there's a very simple reason why. This plan, it reminds me of the ACA and how the whole purpose of the ACA was to protect the interests of the insurance companies. That was the main thing. What they're doing with this plan is they are letting state legislature off the hook because unless they wanna properly fund these universities, no plan is going to succeed. And somebody said the eventual, as soon as they can get themselves uncommitted from any of these small towns, you, I mean, you know what's coming next. Those universities will eventually be closed and they will devastate the economies of small towns. They need to first go back and address the elephant in the room. And I think our union president has talked about this, but they got to fund it. And somebody has to hold their feet to the fire. And until they properly fund it, talking about any plan to me is a waste of time. All right. Thanks so much for letting me talk. Thank you, Daniel. Up next is Ramona from Lock Haven and then Mark Cloud also from Lock Haven. Thank you, Catherine. I'm Ramona Bruma. This is my 20th year at Lock Haven. I'm chair of visual and performing arts and my comments are related to page seven of the Northeast Integration Plan, where they are talking about diversity, equity, and inclusion. And what I was kind of disappointed, um, I appreciate the work that the working groups did in coming up with their recommendations, but it sounds like they are on a perpetual fact-finding mission to figure out what to do with diversity, equity, and inclusion. So as a part of that report, they're going to conduct research. They're going to do evaluations. They're going to come up um, with um, DIE services. Well, in 20 years of being at Lock Haven, that doesn't exist now. The things that they're talking about they're going to do, they, these things don't exist before integration. I want somebody to tell me how diverse, I'm talking about diversity across the board when you're talking about race, gender, ability, how diverse is Mansfield, how diverse is Lock Haven, how diverse is Bloomsburg before integration. Does anybody know that Bloomsburg has one Hispanic staff member and no Hispanic faculty? We had five Hispanic faculty and retrenchment took away two. So let's Let's have diverse people talk about what diversity is like, because every time someone is talking about how well diversity, equity, and inclusion are before and after integration, it's somebody from the majority population. So I've seen the numbers of diverse faculty gradually decrease. I think it's like, I can count them on one hand practically now. And nice people, but I'm going to say, I'm going to think I might upset some people. We need, we need support from PASHI and AFSCA. And my, the other comment I want to make as chair of visual performing arts, theater, music, dance were decimated. And going into integration, having, let, let's say it does end up being majority online courses, the students need a well-rounded environment for their physical, emotional, and mental well-being, regardless of their major. And you might not want music at Lock Haven, but they want music at Lock Haven. And they, I think that 
they need to pay careful attention to what is being said in social media so you can come up with a plan, but what do the students want? Lock Haven totally renovated a 600 seat Price Auditorium. They built an exterior amphitheater and we have a 300 seat space also with nobody to put on performances. And that, that's my last comment. I appreciate you listening. Thank you. Thank you, Ramona. Next up is Mark Cloud. And if anyone else would like to speak after Mark, please raise your hand so I can put you in the queue. Thank you. Uh, thank you. And thank you to all my colleagues for all their comments to date. I've um, been in Lock Haven for 35 years. Uh, my comments are, are focused on the Northeast integration because obviously that's what uh, I am most familiar with and the plan and, and that's enough 250 pages to uh, review. Uh, my, my comments are, I, I hopefully will be simple. It, it is essentially that the chancellor has chosen the wrong solution. He's identified the wrong problem. And the problem is, uh, I forget uh, uh, the gentleman from who, who said it before, which of course is our affordability advantage. The, the irony is that's how he, the chancellor leads his, um, whatever, his dog and pony show. As, as he goes through trying to sell the integration, he describes this uh, affordability advantage that has changed and diminished. Uh, for the Lock Haven show, he, he specifically shows a slide showing how uh, our uh, <clears throat> parents of our students and families uh, have substantively less average in family incomes than most of the other state system schools. Uh, and, and some of the most affected schools like Clarion and Lock Haven and Mansfield and Edinburgh are in a very similar situation. That is why our enrollments have gone down. It is not a case of where we didn't have a sufficient variety of programs and that is keeping our enrollments from happening. It is the affordability advantage. And then when you actually look at all the financial details and this is the one of the areas in which I uh, spend a good deal of my time looking at and the savings just aren't there. When the chancellor describes and one of his bullets is, you know, a 25% reduction in the cost of attaining a degree. And of course, he, he there's just, you know, the, the, in, the, in the assumptions of the plan, the tuition and fees go, 1 go up 1% each year. There's nothing in the assumptions that, that suggests that they're ever going to lower the tuition and, and, and the fees. They're going to do it through some indirect means. And, and most of those indirect means, like having more dual enrollments with high school students, et cetera, it requires no integration. You know, having a greater um, uh, retention, that requires no integration. But those are the values that he is using to support the ridiculous value of a 25% savings. It just is not there. And when we look at the actual expenses and savings that they have in managers and, and so forth that they plan on, on, on looking at, the dollars amount to a minuscule amount uh, in terms of savings. And when they look at those revenues, uh, one of the things that the chancellor likes to talk, so, talk about are the cross subsidies. So smaller institutions like Lock Haven, like Cheney, like uh, <clears throat> uh, uh, Clarion and, and Mansfield, uh, we get a higher proportion of the, of the appropriation per student than schools like Westchester. In fact, the four highest uh, largest enrollment universities all have the most subsidies, if you would, negative subsidies, and all four of those are all considered to be healthy. So it really is not a problem. It is a, a situation where it is a matter of the 
uh, it always escapes my mind the word, but the, the cost savings you get with larger size, right? You know, hopefully what I'm talking about, right? So as you go up uh, higher in size, you get those cost efficiencies. That's why a school like Cheney and Mansfield and Lock Haven have more subsidies, uh, a greater proportion. Uh, but nonetheless, when the, the Northeast Integration Financial Plan came out, they show uh, some, you know, $3 million worth of profit after in a $250 million a year budget, uh, which of course is a very small percentage. And they assume for all four years that the same cross subsidies will be happening. So how are they saving enough to ever change the formula, the allocation formula that the uh, chancellor says needs to be done? Because there's nothing in the plan that suggests that they're going to have an extra $15 million per year for the Northeast integration if they were to do such a thing, even though that would be foolhardy. Um, <clears throat> the last thing I want to say is it's not, you know, there are other solutions other than just giving more money and uh, in, in addressing the affordability advantage. You have creative thoughts like the Nellie Bly Scholarship Program put out by the governor. If you're not familiar with it, please be familiar with it and share that. That is that is uh, help for 44,000 students a year. So instead of spending money on a racehorse developmental fund, this is a much more productive uh, 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 angle to address the affordability advantage where the integration just does not address the true problem we face. Thank you for the time. Thank you, Mark. And I dropped a, a link to a little bit more about Nellie Bly Scholarship if anyone wants to read up on that. I've seen a few people join us in the last few minutes or so. So I'm just going to do my super quick spiel to remind everyone of just some of our basic, most important things to keep in mind. As we mentioned uh, in all of the material leading up to this, we are not timing your comments, but please do keep in mind that others would like to speak as well and how many folks we have. So please keep that in mind as you speak. Also keep in mind, this is not a debate. So we will not be rem uh, remarking off of other commenters what their statements are. And most important, please keep your comments to be focused on the plan, not particular people involved with the plan and uh, no personal attacks. So with that, I will move on to David. And if anyone else has any comments, please raise your hand so that we can put you in the queue and I can call on you after David. Thank you. Thank you. I did not forget to unmute there, Dan, just so you didn't see that. Um, so my name is David Reimer. I am a proud KU grad, a proud KU parent, and I've been on staff for 13 years. I'm in the IT department. No surprise, you can look me up. Um, you know, the writing is, you know, Kutztown is not one of the ones being targeted right now, like most of, of everybody that's here on this call. Um, but um, we are being affected. You know, the, the writing is on the wall. Um, uh, you know, we are losing jobs. Uh, most recently, um, and not maybe not too many people know about this, but uh, at least at Kutztown, but uh, outsourcing is taking place. Uh, on our campus. And that's, uh, um, you know, our union um, fought a good fight and uh, lost against Pashi. So like I said, outsour outsourcing is happening. And um, that's, it's going to continue. And uh, we're very afraid of that. And the other thing too is, and I'm sure this is across the entire system, is that morale is way down. Morale is so low. And it, it's just, you know, I love what I do. I love where I do it. Um, and it's really hard to put on a, a, a smile when the, when, the, when the kids are on campus. I call them kids, but I, you know, I, I love when the students are on campus. Um, and, and when they're not, um, it, it's really tough. I'm sure everybody uh, feels that. Um, but when the kids are on campus, it's really hard to put a smile on your face you know, oh, everything's okay when you know it's not. You know, the other thing too is that we've got scores of, of seasoned staff, you know, our secretarial staff or administrative staff are, um, you know, that are 
took advantage of that uh, retirement and all of those years experience, 20, 25, 30, 35 years experience is out the window. And uh, we're not gonna get those positions back, um, which makes everybody you know, do more with less. Um, the other thing is, you know, it's really sad that we're what, like 48th in the nation for state funding. And, and I don't know how we can change that, but you know, that, that, yeah, you know, we do need to, I, I see lots of wasteful spending and I'm sure everybody else does. Um, but it would be nice to have a little bit more state funding. You know, many of my friends are faculty and I have great respect for each and every one of you. And I stand with you. I've stood um, I stood with uh, Dan and, and his co and KU colleagues, um, and, I, and I stand behind you here, too. Um, I have to agree with Mark, you know, where are the savings? I poured through that, poured through the reports and listened to testimony, and, and, and I'm not seeing it either. Um, you know, we are, and it's coming down that uh, there are going to be shared services. It's happening now. HR services are being shared between universities, procurement is being shared, um, and like I said, outsourcing. So um, it, it's gonna be a sad day, uh, you know, sad days ahead, I guess I could say that. So um, you know, that's really what I have to say. I, I appreciate everything you, that, uh, that the uh, faculty is doing here. Thank you, David. I don't see anyone in the queue, so if anyone has something else to say, you can either begin speaking or raise your hand and I will call on you. I hope that you will take advantage of this time. I see there's 48 people here and we've had 10 people speak. I just I just uh, tallied up the, the amount. So I hope that if you haven't contributed yet that you will consider doing that now. Well, oh, Nada, am I saying that correctly? From Bloomsburg, please begin. You're muted. You hear me now, I'm sure. You're good. Okay, sorry guys. Um, I sat in through that whole thing with the chancellor the first time. I went in and I listened to what was said on the 26th. My impression is that from nebulous stuff, we've basically progressed to we will do this, we will do this. There is nothing con concrete to justify a lot of their statements about money, about enrollment. And one of the things that comes to mind is that they keep insisting on actionable stuff, but how about proposing postponement of these decisions well, until we have this data, until we, they can justify everything they're saying. Just as sort of background, the president is proposing what, 62 billion for retention and other things like that. I mean, that that is not gonna happen. That's probably just wishful thinking, but things may develop in such a direction that it would be better to postpone what they're trying to do now. And I'm sorry, I belong to the big bank theory crowd and I like numbers and everything they've said on the 26th was up in the air of wishful thinking, okay? That's all I had to say. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Who else has some comments to share? While we're waiting for the next person to speak, um, Mark, do you have something else briefly to add? Yeah, if that's okay, I, I, I'd Go be ahead. glad to. And it's about the about the plan. And I don't know if uh, if it's true in the, in the Western integration, but uh, you know, <clears throat> we were able to obtain their. In addition to the Northeast uh, plan, they have a a spreadsheet that describes their. Um, in their their CPP in a, in an Excel spreadsheet that has their projections uh, throughout the four years, and I just want to note that how incomplete things are. That when they say in the narrative that there's a twenty percent cut in uh, management and a twenty percent cut in their what's the right word um, 
support staff, something like that. It's not a term that we normally use. At any rate, um, then you actually look at the workforce. So everybody's looked at these financial documents that they have their, their budgets and there's a separate tab for just workforce and there's a whole separate tab for, um, <clears throat> for uh, you know, student uh, uh, enrollment uh, projections and so forth. So this is really giving all the, the details that they took screenshots in some instances to put in the reports, at least in the Northeast one. So as I looked at that, you look at the workforce. So I'll just give the example of management, okay? So there's four years. In the first year um, of, the, of the plan, they have 13 fewer managers. And then for any, every subsequent year, there's no change. For AFSCME employees, in no single year is there any change, none. The FTE values are the same each year. Scupa, they increased by four, and then for the first year, and then no change. Uh, so I'm not sure where they're getting 20% cut. It certainly isn't reflected in that workforce. Now, I did talk to the, uh, uh, their, the CFO of the state system, and her response was that, well, if, if you actually look at the budget dollars, they just subtracted a lump sum each year for management and for what they described as you know, support staff. But they're not linked to people. Um, it's, it, I don't wanna get into all the details of, 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 of how they responded to this, but it is, it is a clear illustration of a plan that is incomplete. I know at least the, the, our financial uh, administration here at Lock Haven, they would never put together a budget in which you didn't link the dollars that you have for salary and compensation with the actual people. And so they, just to give you another how sloppy it is, they took all of the compensation dollars. So you have to have compensation dollars for, for, uh, for, for retirement, for health, for, you know, there's 12 different cells just for that. So what they did is they just put all of the management benefit savings they had managed and put it into one cell in terms of SIRS retirement of course, generated a lot of questions for me. Well, how in the world did management drop their, their, their SERS retirement costs by 84%? Well, we just stuck everything in that one cell. Well, at any rate, anybody who's worked in financial documents, that just isn't kosher uh, and incomplete. So I just wanna give a very specific example of how the plan itself is incomplete. Thank you, Mark. We don't have anyone else in the queue, but I strongly encourage everyone, if you're here and you haven't spoken, please take advantage of this time. If you're worried that you don't have enough to say, please don't also hesitate to just get on and say what, just brief thoughts. You don't need to fill a certain amount of time. Uh, there's no minimum either, no, no maximum time or minimum. So please um, let us know if you've, if you've come and you have some comments to share, we would love to hear from you. And, that way we can pass them along. While we're waiting for the next part, oh, go ahead, Nada. You're on. Yeah, yeah. Okay, got it. Um, on a di in a different vein, there is something that is totally, totally nonsensical that major courses are going to go online. And I'm talking from the STEM perspective, where you have labs, where you have math recitations, sessions, where students come to your office so you could help them out. Now, all that is not included in these plans. And the whole plan sort of reeks of lack of understanding what STEM means. So. Uh, 
you will probably hear more from my other colleagues as well. But all in all, the plan was not written or put together or whatever you want to call it by people who have a deep understanding of what we're dealing with. Okay. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Again, please do not hesitate. We're hopefully a friendly group here that you can be confident and, and share your thoughts. While we're waiting for the next person to speak, I will uh, talk briefly again about the state system has four sessions coming up that, they're, that are their official sessions that are June 9th and 10th. They're at 8 to 9.30 and then 4.30, oh, 4 or 4.30 to 6. Well, I'll send out those dates exact, uh, exactly in the email that I follow up from that. So we strongly encourage you to go to those as well. Even if you spoke today, we want to make sure that everyone's on the record and that your comments are processed and heard. We're going to turn them over, but it would be it would behoove you, I think, as well to, to comment through those channels as well. We also strongly encourage you to leave written comments by the through the state systems website. If you would like to email as well, there's a Board of Governors email address that you can use and you can send your comment. I believe it's public comments, pashi.edu. So there's many ways that you can submit comments. There's also on our website some information about legislators that you can contact, members of the Board of Governors, the, go the governor himself, Governor Tom Wolf. We encourage you to share your comments widely and often. And um, if you think of another comment, after, if you've already made a comment to the state system, you this, this is a lot of pages, the plans. And so if you've had some more time to digest after your initial comments, please don't hesitate to send a second comment. I think people are, are probably going to expect to have their comments evolve and um, have more thoughts come up. So please, please, please document your comments. And if you're comfortable doing so, if you submit written comments and you'd like to send a copy to scramsey at abscuff.org, we're also kind of keeping track of those. I'll have all this information at the email at the end. I'm just using my skills that I learned in college speech class right now to fill some time while someone gets ready to speak. Um, we have 37 folks here and we've had 13 people talk, but actually just 11 because we've had a couple of double speakers. So again, please do not hesitate to speak up. You don't have to have a long comment. You can just say something short and simple. Um, I'm very happy to see that there are folks here from universities that are not on the consolidation plan. So thank you also to everyone who's come from Westchester and Kutztown and, and other places that are not, not part of the plans. It's, it's great to have that solidarity. Anyone else? I'm looking at some faces in the squares that have not spoken. So I'm looking at you if you have not spoken up. But thank you for being here and support as well. We're appreciative of that. Dan, thank you so much. What would you like to say? Go ahead. Hi, I'm uh, Dan McCurry from Bloomsburg University. I'm a uh, chemistry professor here. And I've only been here three years, uh, but every semester I'm, I'm always dealing with students who they don't have time to, to finish their work because they're working outside of school just to afford uh, tuition. And it's um, unfortunately this past semester, I've even had a student withdraw from the entire university because they're too burdened with work that they have to do just to afford tuition here. And so this whole aspect of uh, integration and, and trying to broaden these, these opportunities for students is really just letting go a lot of the, the great students we have here already. Um, I even have a, uh, an advisee right now who's having trouble or not registered for classes yet because they can't afford the tuition. Uh, and, and it's these students that we're losing and this uh, leading to a decline in enrollment that, that's really hurting us, I think. Um, I'm certainly open to expanding our program array and trying to attract more students, but we kind of have to keep the ones that we already have uh, uh, going. So that's all I have, just a brief comment. <laughs> Thank you, Dan. Um, if anyone is think, looking for a prompt as far as what, what to talk about, tell us why you're here and why you felt it was important to come to this session that hopefully will inspire some of the comments that you may want to share.
Tabitha, thank you for raising your hand. Go ahead. So I came here tonight primarily to hear what's happening and a lot of the universities are being consolidated. I am from Kutztown University and you've already heard from some of my colleagues tonight. We aren't part of the integrations, but we certainly have reasons to be concerned uh, just like everyone else. And we're certainly in solidarity uh, with our colleagues at our sister universities. I am really here tonight though in my capacity as the uh, chair of the state uh, social justice committee and looking at ways that we can um, really organize and push back against this plan that is going to be devastating for faculty, students, uh, staff, community, these entire towns where the schools are. Um, so I, I really am I'm just looking for, for ways to, to kind of come together and for us to, to work against this and, and what we can do to organize uh, practically and uh, efficiently to, to try to push back against this plan that is clearly not in the best interest of any one in Pashi. Thank you. Thank you so much. Who else has comments to share, thoughts about what your reactions were when you read the plans um, that came out in late April? Well, the next person is, is forming their thoughts. I will just point out that at appsgift.org slash comments is our, that's our page where you can sign up for our next events. The next one that's Abscuff, uh, an Abscuff's run event is June 8th from noon to 1.30. That's open to everyone. And we have one more on June 14th from 9 to 10.30 a.m. That is a Monday, but I will be sending out emails beforehand to remind you that you'll be starting off your week with our session. And then finally, on June 15th from 7 to 8.30 p.m., that is our session that is exclusively for students. We are going to be live streaming it so that folks can see what's going on within it, but we really wanted to have an opportunity for students to come and without any sort of intimidation from professors or coaches or legislators or reporters or anyone else who might be there that they might be nervous sharing their thoughts around, I will be there, but, um, it's going to be, other than that, the speakers and Sean will be there. Other than that, it will be just um, just students and her, we may have a, a, an APSCIF officer there as well, of course. But we'll, it will be an opportunity just for students and hopefully at a time that will be good for students to come in the evening. We really wanted to have a variety of times and a variety of dates so that everyone would have opportunities to fit at least one of the sessions into our schedule or into their schedules. As I said, the students one is June 5th, June 5th, June 15th, 15th. There will be some students here tonight. And of course, students are welcome at the other two sessions as well. And then the state systems events are June 9th and 10th. I will have a link in the email that I follow up from this event with that has information about, they released this week, the Zoom link to join. You can watch, you can participate via Zoom, but you can also just watch on YouTube if you would like to as well. And the state system is also asking people to register just so that they have an idea of how many people are planning to attend their sessions, but that is not required. So after you leave this meeting, make sure that you have put the one of those events on your calendar. And again, please make sure that you submit some written comments to the state system submit written comments to the governor, to the board of governors, all of those so that we have all of all of the voices heard and make sure that those uh, comments are logged. So I know we're reaching the end of the, our time, but I, we do also have plenty of time. We wanna make sure that anyone who came here today with some thoughts has an opportunity, opportunity to share them. Because otherwise the state system and legislators and reporters are just gonna watch me talking. Well, if you're here today and you haven't spoken, I hope you will get your thoughts together for our next one of our next sessions. Um, 
You have a few seconds as we kind of say goodbye if you would like to change your mind and speak, but I see some folks are jumping off. So thank you again so much. I know these are busy times and that we've been on living on Zoom for more than a year and a half. So Jamie, Sean, Chris, uh, any other folks have something to add before we take off? All right, well, thank, you just again, just everyone. thank you again, oh. everyone. I just wanna thank everybody for taking the time out of their evening to come. These are helpful for us to hear what people have to say. And I look forward to hearing more uh, from any, any of you at the upcoming events. Look forward to hearing what's happening at the, the Pashi sponsored events. And uh, especially looking forward to hearing what some of our students uh, are thinking as they're facing uh, the consolidation of six of our campuses into two. So thank you very much uh, to everybody. And thanks, Catherine, Sean, Chris, for helping put this together.